flour is still zero rated. Mm -hmm. uh, certain types of milk, uh, condensed milk is not, is now, now attract fat. But mm -hmm. condensed milk is essentially 90% sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, bread, white and whole wheat bread is still zero rated. Mm -hmm. Cheese, cheddar cheese is uh, cheese is still zero rated. Fresh butter, peanut butter. So there's a whole there's a there's a list of things that are zero rated. Mm -hmm. That the average consumer, whatever the whatever the, the, the income, the average consumer will still purchase and mm -hmm. will still purchase VAT free. And there are things on the on the list which was zero rated that should not have been. For example, waffles. I mean which <laughs> you know uh the, the mm -hmm. finance minister likes mm -hmm. to talk about uh cherries, the, the fancy cherries in the bottle. And some of these things should not have been. Yogurt for example is now mm -hmm. now attracts VAT. But dahi, which is something that in rural communities and in in, con in, in, in communities across the country, you know, f I grew up consuming dahi as a child, which is essentially, you know, yo yogurt. Thank and you. I was totally it, it is, lost this <laughs> it is, um, So it, it, it remains, it, you, you know, you could consume that. And there are mm -hmm. other things that should not have been zero rated, that became zero rated and may have influenced our consumption mm. patterns in the country, and we need to, f to fix that. But on the same hand, Renny, in terms of, I have been out there saying, and I've accepted, mm. and I've said across the country that food safety is a big issue for me. On the production end, on the retail end, in relation to packaging and labeling and handling of food, and everywhere I go, mm -hmm. I talk about this issue of, of food safety. Uh, we, we we've seen we've seen what what uh, food poor food uh, mm. poor handling practices can do and I have I have heard doctors across the country uh, some of the experts that I talk to talk about the fact that Trinidadians are ill on account of you know food quality mm -hmm. and they're ill without even knowing it and we have a responsibility to deal with that. So There's I a very small point you made a moment ago that's very instructive <laughs> because a lot of these labelings uh, you actually can't read them or they're in a, another language and you have no idea what you consume. So I have said mm -hmm. to our d division of research for example I've said you know where is the food safety function in this ministry? Who is mm -hmm. dealing with food safety? Who is dealing with the use, safe use of pesticides and who is doing the research on, on GMOs and where are we heading as a country? I know I can't have said that I'm not going to tackle geo, GMOs now. I'm not going to tackle pesticide levels in food now. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm building the capacity in the ministry to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I, the point is that I recognize that even as we talk about increasing production and increasing the use of local products there are issues relating to quality relating to reliability of supply relating to, to the use of pesticides and there's there's not a lot of debate in the country but there there is an interest in organic farming and there is some there are people who are concerned about the the, the use of gmos in trinidad and tobago we will get there mm -hmm. but for mm -hmm. now i would like to have a ministry that is fully responsive to the needs of farmers, fishermen, and state land users in the country. And I would like to have a ministry that is able to function over the long haul in changing consumption patterns in the country, in influencing health decision and healthy living and healthy lifestyles. And in fact, a lot, a lot of the PNM's policy on agriculture deals with health issues. Yes. And a lot of times I've spoken, I said, I believe that I have a mandate that covers agriculture, the health of Trinidadians, and the education of Trinidadians. And some of those things are going to come on stream. In fact, Namdevco has just gone out for expertise on, uh, on branding and distribution mm -hmm. and marketing. The ministry itself is about to go out for expertise on communication in terms of developing the, the type of uh, content we have to share with, with um with Trinidadians, mm -hmm. whether it is uh, the, the person who is interested in home gardens, um, who would like to have some basic training, the ministry is working on that. We're working on uh, going out through and with the Ministry of Education and Health to the schools. Uh, the, the government has already taken a decision that school feeding must move to 100% local mm -hmm. content. It would not happen overnight. But that is the government's policy. 
I have asked uh, Minister of Health and Minister of Education for us to talk about uh, school cafeterias. In other words, you can't be teaching school nutrition in yes, the right. classroom and serving. If you go to any, any stuff school, and processed stuff, any and all school that. Mm-hmm. cafeteria. In fact, the New York Times yesterday had mm-hmm. an article which I put up on on social media about about cafeterias about in the, the United cafeterias, States, yes, and you're lunches, laughing, yes. but you know, I read it. Yes, and you mm-hmm. have to, mm-hmm. you know, I accept that you have to strike a balance. We don't have. We don't have an issue with uh, with with fast food, the fast food type culture in school mm-hmm. feeding. Mm-hmm. We have in school mm-hmm. feeding. Mm-hmm. We have good and healthy meals and so on. The problem with our school feeding is the lack, almost total absence of local content. Right. So right. so we we we're getting there. We're getting there. One of the initiatives that uh, the gentleman with me this morning are, are partnering with the ministry. Um, it's the initiative of the agricultural exhibition. Mm-hmm. I know growing up as a child, we went out. Uh, my father was employed in this ministry. We went out as many Trinidadians growing up to a major agricultural fair. Yes. And yes. and uh, for World Food Day 2016, we we're going to celebrate with all our international and regional partners and the local farming and fishing community. We're going to partner to, to produce a, a great uh, agricultural exhibition. And we'd use the opportunity this year, the agricultural exhibition, to formally launch the Prime Minister's Awards Program in Agriculture. Oh, we, we, we're bringing that back. We are. We Beautiful. are bringing it. And it, it, it's, it's going to be, it's gonna be uh, under the patronage of the Prime Minister. And um, as I tell people across the country, I am fortunate to have succeeded uh, Prime Minister Rowley as Minister of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries. And there are days when I'm unfortunate to have succeeded him because if it's one ministry that he has... He understands, on, so he's looking he at you. He understands it's this ministry. I like your clarity, uh, Senator, the Honorable Clarence Rambarat. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to be with us this morning. Clearing up, clearing up a couple of things, and you were not scheduled, but you were listening, and you said, I have to come in and add something. We are very thankful that you took the time, and uh, we are indeed privileged that you came in this morning. Thank you very much. I thank you. Uh, this is the economist, this is the economist, uh, Maharaj, go ahead please. The Honourable Minister, clearly, without me preempting him, of course, as you can see, I was able to track his moves yes. in the last few months. I, I don't think there's any cause to mm-hmm. panic in the sector. Well, that, I think I that, said, is the, yeah. that is a good thing about what he did this morning. Exactly. Uh, but by revisiting here. what is... Uh, there's no yeah. such word I'm coining. <laughs> By revisiting what's uh, added to the VAT list and what is VAT zero is making very clear exactly. that it, it, it is, is assisting the local industry and it's helping folks to, one, have a great appreciation for what is here, not spending money for things that you already have here and doing it it's in a, a win-win healthy situation. way. It's a win-win situation indeed. Maharaj, uh, that is uh, Omadat Maharaj, Ramesh, uh, Ramsumir, Ramash, Ramsumir. Both of you, thank you so much. Uh, Senator, thank you so so much for taking thank the time to be with us. Listeners, thank you so much for joining us inside Brunch this morning. You are invited to join us Monday through Friday from 6 until 9 o'clock for the morning show. My name is Rennie Bishop. Thank you for the extended time. Have yourself a great Sunday.